the knockout has traditionally been the most spectacular aspect of martial arts. But we should note that putting your opponent's lights out does not require an athletic build. Today we're going to show you the best moments of pot-bellied punchers that surprised both the audience and their opponents with massive body-positive fighting skills. Ben Rothwell's ungainly looks certainly never stopped him from crushing his enemies all over the world. Since he won 14 of his 15 bouts between 2005 to 2008 and never lost a fight in the prestigious IFL League, he finally ended up getting signed to the UFC. He entered the ultimate promotion with a 2-3 record, losing to Velasquez, Hunt and Gonzaga. With his awkward moves initially earning him worldwide derision, the joke stopped when he knocked out Brandon Schaub. He's dazed. Yep. Good Pushing right forward hand by Schaub. Schaub. Oh, Schaub got right. Schaub. He's out. And it is all over. And then pulled the same stunt against Brandon Vieira. Next came a nine-month suspension for performance-enhancing drugs and a fight with Alistair Overeem. Hardly anyone believed that Rothwell stood a chance against the Dutch star, who'd been enjoying the peak of his physical condition. The battle went on pretty solidly, with Overeem swooping attacks and occasional signature knees. Rothwell, meanwhile, traditionally stomped around, looking for a chance to strike big. Telegraphing that shot a little bit too much. Oh, big uppercut from Rothwell! First came an uppercut, getting Overeem staggered. Less than a minute later, Rothwell wrapped up what he had started. Nice left hand, but down goes Overeem! Oh, this one's gonna end! Ben Rothwell has done it! The knockout extended Rothwell's winning streak, nearly getting Big Ben a title shot. Nowadays, hardly anyone would remember Mike Russo and his career. He came to the UFC with an 11-1 record, losing only to Sergei Kharitonov. Despite his flabby physique, Russo won his UFC debut and was drafted to challenge Todd Duffy. Being only 24 at the time, Duffy had the looks of a bodybuilder with superior moves, great punching power, and an undefeated record. There was no doubt that he would become a major star. Hard work, hard work, baby. That's it. That's all it takes. However, Russo once again reminded us to never underestimate the strength of fortitude. Knocked down 40 seconds after the start, he recovered to withstand a 10-minute series of powerful strikes. Duffy looking to finish his fight. He said it takes a lot of fuel. Look at that. Look at that uppercut. And early, Mike. And Duffy just teed up. By the third round, Duffy the Beefcake got tired, lost his concentration, and irredeemably missed his career hype train. The blow received by Duffy instantly took away his unbeaten prospect status and made Russo the true hero of the night. And out go the lights! Just in case you think that only UFC fighters can make it into these rankings, we have a shining example from outside the world's leading promotion. Aside from his conspicuous appearance, Chris Barnett always thrills the audience with unexpected stunts. Oh! Oh! After many years of competing in regional promotions in the USA, he became a big hit in Asia and built up quite an impressive collection of wins. At the same time, almost all of his opponents were noticeably more athletic than Chris. After outpointing Walt Harris in 2011, he missed three years. And just when people had already started to forget the Huggy Bear, he came back with a six knockout streak. The most iconic ones were his finishes against Travis Weoff. and John Hill. The crushing power set by the chubby tubby, 
got the two big guys off to Sleepland and earned Barnett his only championship belt. Today, he continues to impress the audience inside of a UFC cage. Because you know I'm all about that cake, about that cake and chicken. Daniel Cormier is known today as a popular commentator, a successful analyst, and one of the best fighters in the history of MMA. Shoulder, baby. But it wasn't always like that. After an excessive weight cut at the 2008 Olympics, he was hospitalized and missed the chance to perform at the pivotal event of his wrestling career. A year later, he made his heavyweight debut in martial arts. Monson. DC had an eight bout winning streak, beating Jeff Monson and ending up in the Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix. Prior to the semifinals, Alistair Overeem reported an injury and withdrew from a fight against Bigfoot Silva, who had just defeated Fyodor Emelianenko. <laughs> Called in to replace the demolition man, Cormier was barely given a chance in this confrontation. Already in the first minute, Daniel dropped the Brazilian with an overhand. Back due to a takedown, like you said. Oh! Then towards the end of the round, he shocked the MMA world. Left in the first, the jab from Cormier. Oh my God. God, down goes Silva. Cormier has done it. Daniel wow. Cormier has done it. The finishing uppercut sent Bigfoot free falling down and DC's career skyrocketing up. After winning the Grand Prix a few months later, Cormier remained unbeaten as a heavyweight. That was until the day when Stipe Miocic examined his liver. Daniel Cormier, ladies and gentlemen. Justin Willis used to play American football as a young kid. The sport requires extra body mass at certain positions. With football now being a thing of the past, his body, however, retained the visible beefiness. So, Willis came to the UFC as a chubby, barely known fighter with a 4 and 1 record. At UFC 218, he faced another ex-footballer, Alan Crowder, who looked much bulkier, yet fitter. The very first fight of the event gave a great start to the evening, thanks to Willis. Halfway through the opening round, he had his opponent jammed against the fence and shut him off with one spectacular blow. In the first round, Willis trying to close it out here. Oh, down goes Crowder! Justin Willis! Following two more wins after that, Justin kind of focused on social media fights. Later on, he was removed from a promotion after a gutless defeat to Curtis Blades. At this point, he spent the last two years waiting for an opportunity to show his physique in the PFL. In 2015, it seemed like ex-wrestler Timothy Johnson's career was set to take off. After finishing off Shamil Abdurahimov on the ground, he automatically began to be portrayed as promising fresh blood in the heavyweight division. But in the end, Johnson was only remembered for his mustache, jelly belly vibes, and tedious fighting style. His UFC contract was never renewed, despite his positive win-loss ratio. There's a nice job. Got that? Look at place. It was probably the thirst for good money and scalps of aging veterans that brought him to Bellator. But, alas, his very first opponents knocked Johnson out in less than two minutes. John, oh, he's hurt. Yeah, he's stunned just off of that hand. That's it. It's done. It is all over. The losing streak granted the American Beardo a role as the gatekeeper for upcoming talents. The matchmakers pitted him against the undefeated Tyrell Fortune a huge bookies favorite at the time. Tyrell Fortune in the rough club. Halfway through the round, Johnson's explosive combination suddenly opened the gates for his own career's future. Another right hand, oh, but Johnson just clocked Fortune! Fortune favors the... With the marvelous knockout becoming one of the biggest upsets of the year, it marked Johnson's second youth. A couple more wins earned him the golden ticket to enter the cage with legend Fyodor Emelianenko. But that Cinderella story has no happy ending here.
Bob Sapp ranks as one of the most popular fighters in Japan. His muscle mass, facial expressiveness, and showmanship won the hearts of his audience before he made a habit of falling to the ground from a gentle breeze. <laughs> In 2016, the Korean promotion Road FC decided to make use of the enormous SAP's popularity and invited him to headline an event in China. His opponent was local fighter Aori Gaeli, who was almost as flamboyant as the Beast, except far superior to him in body fat percentage. SAP's first attempts to start a scuffle were made at the press conference. At the weigh-in, he promised to destroy his opponent and burst into eerie laughter. <laughs> but in the cage, there was no room for fun. A couple of seconds after the memorable dance, the Chinese fighter fearlessly went for the brawl. <laughs> Bob Sapp suffered his 14th consecutive loss. At the same time, Aori Gailey's confidence got a strong boost. Later on, he won five more fights and somehow managed to survive even after that mighty blow. Never one to boast of either physique or size, Mark Hunt didn't give a damn and kept his steel chin up. He conquered K-1 Grand Prix and fought almost every Pride FC star to finally make it to the ultimate promotion after five losses in a row. It got so bad that Dana White offered the Super Samoan $450,000 just to give up his contract. Mark, however, chose to move on. It's, it, it's, it. it's all over! Losing to Sean McCorkle meant bringing his losing streak to six. First round. And that was the point when everything changed. The rough patch stopped with four straight wins and a few spectacular knockouts. One of those KOs particularly stood out. Aside from looking like a statue of a Greek god, Chiai Kongo had been unbeaten for years at the time. The weigh-in was the ultimate manifestation of physical domination. Hunt and Kongo, and here we go! But the next day, inside the octagon, Mark Hunt showed that the true power was concealed under his belly. He's able to get free with his punches. Big 265. Oh, big right hand. hand. Kongo's in all sorts of trouble. And, and he's trying to finish it here. It's over. It's over. And it is all over. Mark, the Dang. Super Samoan. William Murder in the beat. It was this knockout that made the crowd believe that the Super Samoan could still perform at the highest level. A couple of years later, Hunt almost made it to the title. Super Samoan Hunt! Check Congo! Poor Congo is the only guy to be mentioned twice in our rankings today. After the unfortunate defeat to Hunt, the French striker bounced back and beat Sean Jordan by unanimous decision. Then he went through another nightmare, commonly known as Roy Nelson. A regular regional contender and formerly an IFL belt owner, Big Country made it to the ultimate fighter in his 30s. Roy Nelson and I. Back then, Dana White publicly proclaimed that Nelson had the worst physical shape of anyone he'd ever seen. That, however, didn't stop Big Country from winning that season handily and starting his UFC career with two remarkable knockouts. For a few years, he dangled in the middle of the roster, entertaining the audience with his granite chin, right overhead, and belly rubs. And then came the great breakthrough. After knocking out Ed Herman, country with the big right hand, and, it is and Matt Mitrione, with that kick. Oh! Big country! 
Nelson accepted the risky challenge against Congo. The fight between the athletic antipodes lasted just over two minutes. Against the cage either. A signature right hand brought Nelson his third straight knockout, and it was probably the most memorable moment of his long career. Oh, man. David Abbott, aka The Tank, is a true mixed martial arts icon. He has been a household name since the days when MMA was known as human cockfighting in the States. Violent, aggressive, and almost uncontrollable, Abbott hardly ever lost a single bar or street fight, with his beer belly only adding to his brutality. Tank competed in five one-day UFC tournaments, a record that will never be broken. It's a very bad position for he taps out. He taps out. He taps out. One of those days, Abbott's semi-final opponent was Steve Nelmark. Despite the other contenders' leaner and more athletic build, Tank sprung forward and shook the cage with a slam that cost him his neck. After getting out of the hold, Abbott literally folded his opponent in half. He may step in. Oh, that's it. The moment has become a real gem, not only in Tank's career, but in all old-school highlight compilations. Even if the name Eric Ash doesn't ring a bell, Butterbean is probably one you've heard of. The old-school fatso was quite a notorious figure in boxing. Having dozens of fights every year, he built up a record of 58 knockouts and even won the IBA World Championship belt. As his boxing career went into a slump, Ash also made appearances in pro wrestling, kickboxing, and MMA. In February of 2007, with an 8-3 career record, he came to London to headline the 20th Cage Rage event. He was matched against James Thompson, the Pride FC veteran and former bodybuilder, who was not only a formidable looking, but also a decently skilled fighter at the time. Skies, actually. He's probably going to use his left jab. Thompson's sour look and a series of kicks were not something for Butterbean to be afraid of. Half a minute later, he rushed forward and downed the beefy Brit. That's a big if, and I think that... There it there is. You go. There it is. Oh, that's about it. I mean, that's about it. Butterbean has done it. For dessert, something Butterbean wouldn't miss for the world, check out the clinch beaning he did against Sean O'Hare, the former pro wrestler whom our older viewers may still remember from TV shows. I thought you were talking about Butterbean. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you love MMA as much as Cormier loves cake. I'm all about that cake, about that cake and chicken. I'm all about that cake, about that cake.